Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video I'm going to explain how we teach children to deeply understand what they're doing when they are multiplying and dividing numbers by 10 and 100. Some people say that multiplying and dividing numbers by 10 and 100 is about adding zeros on the end of the number or taking zeros off or shifting the digits to the left or to the right. In this video, I'm going to show you how to explore this topic in depth with place value counters so that children deeply understand why those rules make sense and when they're useful. If you don't need this video, here's your link to the next one, which is all about rounding. This video does follow naturally from the last two, which were on the foundations of decimal numbers and calculating with decimals. So if you struggle with this video, it's worth going back and watching those two because they should make this much easier. Okay, let's get started with multiplying by 10. So if we consider a calculation like 21 times 10, we can ask children to explore this in their own mind. It's really interesting to listen to their thought patterns, but it's also helpful to establish how we're gonna tackle this topic by building this number 21 with place value counters. So 21 is two tens and one one. To multiply it by 10, we're going to need 10 lots of this. So 10 lots of 21 is going to look like this. When we start to establish this structure, we begin to see that here we have 10 tens. So they're going to exchange into 1, 100 in our answer. I'll just put that here for now. And these 10 tens will also become 100. And the 10 ones, they will become a 10. So there we can see in place value counters that our answer is 210. What we start to see is that each 10 gives us a 100. So we're going to get two 100s. Each one gives us a 10. And we can see we're going to need to put a zero in there to make that number make sense. And if we work with whole numbers, multiplying that by 10, we'll quickly see that there is this shortcut. You can just add a zero. But structurally, what's going on is that everything in one column is becoming something in the next column. Now, of course, it's much easier just to say, stick a zero on the end, but it's not got structural sense. It's a spell. It's just a recipe for maths that works. And it's really important that children learn that maths makes sense. It's not just about spells and recipes. So it's worth putting the time in to make them think. And of course, when we move on to decimal numbers, if they've just learnt to add a zero, their spell quickly falls apart. That's the thing with spells. You don't know when they're gonna work and when they're not gonna work if you don't understand them. So if we change this calculation now, it was 21 times 10. I'm still gonna keep the digits small because it becomes quite chaotic either way. So if I make that 21.12, If you just stick a zero on the end, you could do that to test your child. Just stick a zero on the end, multiplying that by 10 and getting 21.120. Is that right? Does that actually make sense? If you've got 10 lots of 21.12, will that be 21.120? They should be able to unravel for themselves that something's gone wrong. And hopefully, they can start to think through approximately what the answer might be. Well, it's a bit above 20 times 10, so you'd expect the answer to be a bit above 200. You can have those kinds of conversations. And then again, you can build the calculation, 21.12 times 10, if we use place value counters. So we're going to have two one hundredths and one tenth. And again, we want 10 of 
this number here, which is the 21.12. So we're going to have to complete those columns with 10 of each to really show that multiplication happening. So there it is. This is 21.12 times 10. This is your answer. So we've 10 tens, which became 100, another 10 tens, which have become 100, 10 ones, which have become 10, 10 one tenths, well, they are going to become one. And 10 one hundredths, which will become one tenth. And another 10 one hundredths, which will also become one tenth. Therefore, we can see our answer is 211.2. And we can write the answer below here showing how the digits have moved to the left. And we can start to generalise that to a deep understanding of how the digits always move to the left because for every one hundredth there will be a tenth because ten one hundredths are going to make a tenth. For every tenth there will be a one because ten tenths make a hundred and so on. So when you're multiplying by 10, the digits move one place to the left and you can set up grids with column headings to support children as they work on that and become confident with it if they need it. And you need to pay particular attention to what's happening after the decimal point and the fact that we're not just sticking a zero on the end. But that does work if you're multiplying a whole number by 10 because when the digits move to the left, you need to put the zero into the ones as a placeholder to make that number make sense. So what about multiplying by 100? So we've now got to the stage where if you're multiplying a number by 10, 67.38, a child is going to be able to confidently move every digit one place to the left, like that. The question now becomes, what about multiplying by 100? Obviously, the answer isn't going to be the same. And obviously, there's another trick. We just move two places to the left. But why? Well, the easiest way to explain it is to look at the fact that 67.38 times 100 is 67.38 times 10 times 10. Because multiplying by 10 times 10, that 10 times 10 is 100. Now we know how to multiply by 10, we move one place to the left. And so if we're doing it twice, we're going to move two places to the left. So that will become 6, 7, 3, 8. The child you're working with may have other ways of thinking about multiplying by 100. So listen to them, let them explore their thoughts. But if their way is just add two zeros, it's not good enough. They've got to explain that if they're going to be brilliant mathematicians in the future. They'll hate you for it, but it's good for them. And you've got now a clear explanation you can offer them. So if they have been struggling for a bit and they're getting annoyed, you can show them this quite quickly and they'll go, yeah, but I told you it's just moving two places to the left. Right, division. So let's consider the calculation 120 divided by 10. We've got our 120. We're trying to divide this by 10. Now, if your child has learned to work flexibly as division being counting groups and sharing fairly, they're probably going to count groups and quickly see that there are 12 tens in 120. So they've sorted this answer and found that the answer is 12, but they've done it in a way that's not going to set us up well for a calculation like 121 divided by 10. How many tens in 121? Well, you get a remainder. So it's becoming much more tricky. And that becomes even more true if we had a say, 120.2 divided by 10. So really we need to use the sharing fairly model of division to get to grips with the structure of what's going on.
And the way we do that is to build our number and to look at it and to say, well, to share each place value counter fairly between 10 people, I'm going to need to exchange it. So the 100 is going to become tens. The two tens, well, each of those will need to become ones. The one needs to become tenths. Do you see why I've chosen small digits now? And the two tenths, well, they each need to become one hundredths. Phew. And then we can divide this by 10 by sharing fairly into 10 equal parts because each row here is one part of your answer. So the answer to this question is one ten, two ones, one ten and two one hundredths, which is 12.12. 12 12.12. So we can see that the digits have moved one place to the right. And we can also generalize this to say that that's always going to be the case. For every place value counter in the original number, you're going to get a place value counter in your answer that is one place to the right. Because when you split a place value counter into 10 equal parts, you get something 10 times smaller, which is the number in the next place in our decimal system. That's how it works. So we get the result that when you're dividing by 10, the digits move one place to the right. And if the number ends in zero, you can just knock off a zero and that happens. But if it doesn't end in a zero, obviously you can't do that. You need to understand this deeper structure of moving one place to the right to divide by 10. So what about dividing by 100? The key insight here is that if you're dividing by 10, if you're sharing a shape into 10 equal parts, If you divide it by 10 again, if you divide each of those parts by 10, of course my parts aren't perfectly equal, which they should be, you get 1 hundredth. So if you divide by 10 twice, you're effectively dividing by 100. Now we know how to divide by 10 because you just move the digits one place to the right. And we know why that makes sense. And we know that dividing by 100 makes sense as dividing by 10 twice. So we just have to move the digits to the right twice. If you explore your child's thinking, they may come up with some lovely ideas like multiplication being the opposite or the inverse of division. So if you're doing one process for multiplication by a number, the process for dividing by that number should be exactly the opposite to get you back to the original number. And the techniques we've just worked out do click into place with that kind of reasoning too. Okay, for practice with this topic, it is great to work with scale drawings. Can your child draw a scale drawing of the table in front of them? And a scale of 1 to 10 is suitable for that. Could they draw a scale drawing of their room if they measure it with a meter ruler with you and do it on a scale of 1 to 100? It's got the added complication of going from metres to centimetres, but if you just work in centimetres consistently, then that can work quite well. I will try to create a worksheet on this topic, but I'm running a little behind, so it's not ready as this video goes live. I'll hopefully come back and do that. And when that goes live, you'll be able to find it in all the usual places. If you look in the about for my YouTube channel, it says where those are. So your takeaways from this video, multiplying by 10. Yes, you move digits one place to the left, but if you work with place value counters, you can really understand why that works. If you multiply by 100, it's two places to the left and we're multiplying by 10 twice. If you're dividing by 10, it's one place to the right. And again, that can be shown with place value counters. And for dividing by 100, it's two places to the right and that's dividing by 10 twice. And it's great to practice this topic with scale drawings. If you have any questions or suggestions, ideas or thoughts, please put them in the questions. 
and I am gearing up to live streaming, I promise. So if you look in my YouTube description, you should see information about when live streaming is. And I hope you'll come and chat to me and share your thoughts and ideas and we can explore your questions live to really help you be a fabulous teacher. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll join me again soon for the last in this series on teaching the number part of maths to seven to nine year olds. And that video is going to be all about rounding. Bye for now.